this is the fourth part of technology development and we are going to talk about in this part about innovation what are the processes of innovation and different models that innovation uses how innovation can be introduced as a skill and most important of all what is the relationship between invention innovation and how these can be converted through technology development into products processes and new ideas and made into services and bring about transformation and change in the area of development so besides processes and models we'll also talk about what are the other models of innovation how innovation is related to the processes of new age development and most important of all what is meant by technology readiness level in institutions or in industry and then how it is facilitating innovation how we can harness the technology readiness level in order to absorb or innovate and bring in new technology integrate that to become a leading manufacturing place and those are the kind of things we will be talking about now going ahead what we try to find out is that the technology and the theoretical and other particular aspects of technology were being harnessed in the capital formation process and there is a wonderful book in which the name Techn innovation first appears the book by scumter talks about business cycles and he defines that we will simply define innovation as the setting up of a new production function however in today's modern world we'll try to talk about innovation in a definition that says innovation is defined as doing something new or doing it in a new way so that society is benefited and its lifestyle is improved enhanced and enlarged in other words innovation brings in new ideas new concept new methodologies new technologies in order to improve the efficiency the quantum of products and new ideas how we can market them how we can design them how we can create technological route map for them and therefore innovation in a matter defines the pathway to technology development now innovation has been part of the industrial development cycle and this has resulted in right from the 18th century to lead industrial revolutions whether we are talking of the first second third fourth or fifth industrial revolution that's current or the fifth five plus industrial revolution as we talked in the technology development part one we have seen the gradual increase in terms of harnessing what was done through research what was done through new knowledge what was done through new ideas and how first energy was used for making and automating industrial machinery then how transportation was brought in at through use of energy like steam and later on electricity how electricity was able to convert and transform social lifestyles industrial development progress and most important of all the transportation of energy through electricity became a very very innovative concept and that led to the spread of energy spread of prosperity and spread of new ideas this in turn was improved by making it possible to transfer information and so energy energy transmission energy transformation and then information transmission became the third industrial revolution and that was promoted by uh, semiconductor technology vacuum tube technology and then semiconductor technology and at the same time the coal burning or the steam engine was converted using oil and internal combustion engine and that brought in its own way a mass production mechanism for automobiles this enhanced the development of mining industry the metallurgy industry the materials revolution and all these particular things combined together in order to change 
the human lifestyle in order to change human growth and in order to change the civilizational values. It changed education, it changed science, it changed how experiments were done, how the knowledge was transferred one from one point to another point. And at the same time, it also brought in the revolution in terms of how more and more people could become part of learning, part of education, and part of development. The last and the current age is where we are trying to talk in terms of combination of nanotechnology, combination of cyber technology, combination of information technology, and most important of all, combination of all these three together in biotechnology. So we will see these particular things fruit into even more and more innovative processes. And just as we go on doing this innovation management, we also try to find out what are the basic building blocks of innovation, how innovation is strategized, how it is converted into leading aspects, and how it brings in proper methodology by which ideas are understood, ideas are filtered, ideas are developed, and this development process goes through a particular cycle of prototype development, then business case analysis, uh, research and development in order to convert that particular idea into a technology, and then that through the technology, mass production and a rapid development of products and services, and that in turn is sent into the marketplace, receiving the feedback from the marketplace, how the user is using it, how the user is finding it good, and getting feedback from a market, getting feedback from user, and getting feedback from the people, we understand how a rapid cycle of further innovations, further developments are taking place. This is basically Tucker Innovation Model, and this Tucker Innovation Model is probably one of the best to explain how ideas are converted into technology and into products and into services. At the same time, the research continues, and this research brings in new ideas, new findings, new concepts, new uh, understanding of nature, physical, uh, chemical, biological, and other particular nature, and that goes into development of other products or enhancement of the products that are currently in the market. Either we make them more featureful, or we make them more useful, or we make them cheaper, and therefore make them available to more and more people. So at the same time, how that marketing has been made into an innovative format that is another particular way. So innovation basically does not happen only in science, technology, and the products, but innovation happens in every part of life. It is happening in converting societies. It's happening in converting management, managing resources, managing people, managing social conflicts, managing social systems, and bringing in new innovation. At the same time, it's now being used how to manage the catastrophic effects that certain technologies have brought about, how fossil fuels can be managed and how renewable sources can be brought in, and how we can bring in new understanding and ideas about better resource utilization, better renewable energy, better cost effective and recycling of products and materials, and so on. So this is basically trying to tell us about what are the different types of innovators that we have in the domain of innovation. So these are the creator, the solution builder, the leverager, the expander, the defender, and the fast follower. So these six types of innovators have their very set ways in which they innovate and why they innovate, how they innovate, how they use innovation in the science, technology, engineering, and products, and even in services. So this, each one of them, the creator, for instance, tries to talk in terms of how disruptive impact through innovative ideas can be bring in new product ideas can and this is needs a bold a strong a visionary person who can lead through example who can give the benefits and who can mass mobilize people opinion 
and make a focused and disciplined directive and industry so that those particular products become very popular and this becomes a big bet investment for that particular this thing the examples are apple spacex and amazon all three multiple companies they have been led to give new products and continuous innovation in those products continuous integration of technologies new ideas how we can have new i mean how e-commerce can can be converted into a technology intensive operation and how it can reach to every nook and corner of the world so this type of innovators are called the creator innovator then we have the solution builder innovator which uses market and gets inspired by what are the demands in the market what people need they are able to understand what are the niche areas where intervention is required and because of their keen observability because of their ability to sense the market needs they come up with solutions they come up with products that need meet those needs and obviously that becomes a very very important area of development and this ability to design systems according to the needs of the people design systems which make design even clothes design even products design even services design even technologies that are serving people that becomes the most important thing the example is of nike shoes how people could use how the innovator could use sensors and other particular ideas in designing a shoe so that people could have a more comfortable experience to travel to move to walk to run this is what is a solution builder he builds solutions around the needs of the society he builds solutions in order to meet the requirements of the society he builds solutions and products therefore to satisfy the demands of the marketplace then we have the leverager type of innovator who comes up with innovative and superior business models and we have enormous amount of innovation in the marketplace today where services have become the leaders in quality assurance services have become leaders in providing services for hoteling industry for hospitality industry for industry in terms of travel in terms of this in airbnb how they don't own a single room and yet they are providing millions of accommodations to everybody how ola uber and other particular this thing they don't own a car and yet they are providing tourism services to millions of people so product launches basically how we can do aggregation how we can have market to to up with and tied up with the needs of the passengers and similarly these cycles of innovation come even in the marketplace of fashion so how fashion fashion products and other particular products can be designed in order to meet the requirements of leisure really wearing of office wearing and other particular things so zara garments apple iphone ipads and ola cabs are the illustration of a leverager type of innovator and they are therefore leading to another particular innovation cycle where we talk in terms of the expander type of innovation these use expansion in business as their basic innovation process they can find out which are the products which are going to be needed in every part of the continent which are needed in every part of the world and so what they do is they expand their services so that's how multinational corporations are born that's how automobiles from one brand are manufactured in every other particular country and made better made in a more marketable fashion so that they meet the local requirements they meet the cultural and legal requirements of this thing so they use mergers and acquisitions they use diversification of technologies ideas and business models they create value addition through downstream and upstream integration and most important of all they reengineer those businesses which are not doing well and convert them into profitable ventures and most lovingly they improve the flexibility in distribution at the supply chain management the customer satisfaction and because of that the upstream and the downstream integration makes business a profitable venture so innovation in business models 
just as Amazon does, just as Pfizer does, Netflix, total revolution in terms of entertainment, how entertainment suited to multiple languages, multiple this thing, and bringing in cross-cultural understanding in terms of entertainment, and Tata Motors, how they were able to convert Land Rover and Jaguar into a profitable business. These are the kind of expanders and innovators. We have the defender type of innovator that which defend the kind of product and service that otherwise is being threatened by the more disruptive and more aggressive products or more aggressive marketing philosophies. So these are the defender type and they therefore innovate in defensive, uh, defensive strategies, new business uh, and marketing processes, which are cheaper, better, more suited to the local and more business friendly to the small markets to small people. Say, for instance, Amazon provides a platform for any small manufacturer to come up on its platform and sell globally. So see the advantage that it can provide. Or Allstate Insurance provides different types of varieties of insurance, different product mixes, different ways to integrate life insurance with medical insurance, different ways to integrate travel insurance with property insurance, and so on and so forth. So these are the kind of defenders who re-innovate business models and yet come up with new solutions. And we have the fast follower who is able to create dynamic, agile, and lead organizations who have the capacity. Basically, this is possible in startups where they have to do with small number of employees. They have to do with innovative functioning in terms of bringing rapid progress in new product, and they have to bring in new understanding and new dynamics in terms of how even manufacturing can be done. So flexible manufacturing, 3D manufacturing, making possibility to create most complex things in the simplest possible manner, and at the same time, manage the life cycle costs uh, how even recycling is possible and that recycled material, how it can be converted into a product, how the recycling process itself, itself can be converted into a business model, how we can try to talk in terms of in improving the quality and combining that quality with the kind of requirements in different regions, in different environments, and in different circumstances. So basically, we can start in talking in terms of starting from mainframes, how PC market evolved, how Microsoft and Apple and other particular people were able to come up with personal computers, how they have been relegated to by the smartphone, and how now smartphone and is becoming part of entertainment, computation, photography, communication, data, voice, video, what all. So and simultaneously how a travel can be made better, can be made luxurious even at a lower cost. Those are the type of fast follower innovators which change this business model and therefore change how technology is brought into the lifestyle of human beings. This is the graph that tells you or the infographic what tells you about the technology readiness level. Why is technology readiness level important? because we must be able to do an introspection of which are the companies which are able to absorb technology, which are ready to have the ability to understand which idea can be made into a product or can be made into a better profitable service and how it is to be changed or channeled or modified in order that it serves a proper purpose. And this is basically, if you have the technology, Say, for instance, there is a company which has been manufacturing automobiles. Now we want to go from bodies which can be made with other materials or there is a manufacturing aeroplane manufacturing company and they want to make a stealth aircraft and they have to bring in body which can be made from fiber material, can carbon fiber or plastic fiber or some other with this thing. So we have the ability, do we have the ability to absorb new technologies, to invent and integrate and innovate new methods of manufacture and therefore come up with radically different products that have the properties or requirements that demands, say for instance, energy conservation. 
energy efficiency, ability to reduce weight and yet provide the stiffness and the quality of product that demands steel, but yet use fiber pregnated system. So this is basically what we define the readiness level and technology readiness level uh, tries to see how well we can absorb basic research, how well we can understand the feasibility, understand the feasibility of that research to be converted into technology. And once we are able to understand that, how we can bring in different specializations, different people from different walks of life who have understood and mastered various different systems and how they can be integrated to today to demonstrate a technology product which has multiple domain specialists and multiple domain this thing and then bring about subsystems and finally launch a product taking example of an automobile we have today in an automobile most of the thing which is controlled by computers its braking system its carburetor or its fuel consumption system or its acceleration system its navigation system its steering system its other balancing system its ability to overcome braking and skidding all this particular thing can be controlled through a microprocessor so you have to have the ability to design mechanical system electronic system body parts multiple materials integrate them into a particular product and bring them together at the lowest cost at the best possible features with minimum kind of this thing and have a standardized product that will be manufactured over all over the world and yet have the same quality the same standard and the same kind of features this is what is possible through these kind of technology readiness levels and here we are trying to talk in terms of how we understand this technology readiness level we understand it that the nine stages that we have said and these nine stages in turn have the capacity to develop multiple products and multiple services whether we are trying to talk in terms of industry and federal results whether we are trying to talk in terms of defense related industry whether we are trying to talk in terms of advanced products spacecraft design automobile design we're talking in terms of now biotechnology design how we design vaccines how we design products that are going to have suitability in terms of varying apparels and things like that so these are the technology difference levels where various commercial products and services can be integrated so how does innovation get absorbed based on these technology readiness levels we find that here we are trying to talk in terms of if we are seeing company which has very strong technology readiness level and is able to absorb technology very fast versus a weak one there what are the requirements their internal resources what their internal resources how agile how adaptive how smart their internal resources are how competitive their intelligence is how they are able to understand what is important in the marketplace and what all technologies we need to import and what all technology we need to develop in the house and therefore those technologies we need to import which are the partners with whom we should get into partnership and how those partnerships should evolve do we need a partnership with industry or academia or we, do we need partnership with people who are already manufacturing them and so we have interchange of technologies do we have incubator sources where people in the startups are doing something and we want to absorb it so acquisition absorption adaption integration and all these particular how we can use the ideas of the employees how you can use the idea of suppliers vendors distributors external consultants customer complaints and how complaints can be converted into a proper product design these are then based on social networking input data mining and other particular things how strong innovators use the technology level readiness in order to absorb new and better this thing so what we are trying to talk about now how strong and wheat use multi-dimensional sources as inputs for innovation and creating strong innovation frameworks so identify new themes provide latest inputs to ideation teams and therefore review market trends and take inputs from even ordinary people ordinary users ordinary persons and convert that 
into this thing see what is going on in the social media and analyze that and bring it new this thing see what people are thinking that oh if i had this particular product or if i had this product doing this what would happen and so understand market trends identify external players innovation take innovation from different domains so say for instance what is happening in the uh, sports shoes market and see how that can be converted into normal footwear. See what is happening in the sports apparel market and how it can be used for giving better apparel to uh, the common people. How whether a tolerant and longer lasting fabrics can be designed and used and what is the potential of creating new ecosystem which has a better recyclability so can we design plastics which have which can be go back into the system can be recycled much easier instead of lasting for ages together and causing pollution to the environment